So in the last episode, we jumped into some materials and we took a look at some of the new painting functionality in Blender Sculpt Mode. Today now we're going to be jumping into Rendered View and I'm going to show you how you can add some cool lights to your scene to make it look a little bit more dynamic. But as always, my name is Keelan and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's keen and ready to jump in and do some lighting with me today. This one should be nice and short and sweet, so hopefully you can sit down and get this one done in about 10 minutes. But the first thing we need to do then is to jump into our rendered view here, which is gonna let us see what's going on with the actual lighting in our scene. Because when you are in the material preview here, essentially you are just working with some built-in HDRIs and this is not an indicator of what your scene is actually going to look like in your final renders. So for that, come up to here and we're gonna jump into rendered view. And as you can see, our world our world on the initial is pretty dark and boring. So let's firstly talk about how we can add lights into this scene. Okay, so to add some basic lighting in Blender, all you need to do is come up to Add or Shift A, and we're gonna go into the light menu here. And I like to start with a basic three-point lighting setup just to get a basic idea of what it is I wanna do with my guy here. So let's start with a nice area light. And initially, I wanna move this up above him. So G to move, Z to lock this to the Z axis, and then in front view, just to get a better view of what's going on here. Can bring this up and then we can scale this up with S. So you've got a couple of options when it comes to your lighting. Obviously there's a lot we could go into, but for the most part, you're just gonna be playing around with your power, which is gonna increase your brightness. And then you can also adjust your scale, which will generally soften up the shadows and the lighting in areas. Right now, the lighting still isn't looking too good, but when it comes to lighting, personally, generally, <laughs> personally and generally, I tend to use the Cycles Render Engine. So you're inside our render properties here, we can switch over to this. And this is gonna be a bit slower depending on your system, but if you can, make sure that you are using your GPU for this. And as you can see already, this is just gonna use more of a real world calculation to start giving us a nicer lighting appearance. In this case, I want to increase the brightness. And you can either do that inside your object data properties here, or I like to right click, select this adjust power option, and then drag in my cursor left and right, will let me nicely adjust the power of this top light. Now, in this case, this is directly over the top of him, and we're not getting any light at all on my character's face. So when I'm adding lights to my scene, I like to highlight those areas where there's lots of detail to really help capture the shadows and definition in these areas. So in this case, perhaps what I'll want to do is to jump into side view, and I'm just gonna move my light forward a little bit and perhaps tilt it back slightly by pressing R to rotate you. Just so that then from the front, you can see we're starting to get a bit more illumination on the brows, and perhaps it's worth moving it forward a bit more with G and Y, just so this front section gets a nice bit of a glow, and I'm increasing the light once again. Cool, I like that. So now we're getting this nice shadow on the nose, the brows, and you've seen a lot more definition. But what you generally do when you're doing a three-point lighting setup, you wanna get your nice backlight or your top light, and then we can duplicate this off to one side, and then rotate it so it's facing it more directly. And then top view, we can get an idea of the general direction here, back in the front view. And this, whoops, undo there, my bad, hit that. <laughs> and then this one is generally your key light is the general terminology. And the idea is that this is your like main luminance for the one side of your character or your subject in general, but you don't wanna overdo it so that you're blowing it out and losing a lot of detail. But I think something like that will do for the purposes of this tutorial. But at this point, we are losing quite a lot of shadow here. So what I like to do in this case, instead of perhaps reducing the brightness on these, when it comes to Blender, there is a default world lighting, which is adding a general uh, ambient light all across your subject and just your world. And we can take a look at that inside our world properties here, and you can see we have this default color and the default strength. If we just reduce the strength, you can see we start to get darker shadows because the world is becoming darker. And we can see that because I accidentally turned on transparent earlier, so you don't really get a good idea of what I'm doing, but if I turn this off and start turning on that strength again, you can see the world is getting lighter and darker. So perhaps if you had a nighttime scene, you'd want this 
you know, blacked out. But in this case, I think I want it up just a little bit, maybe 0.25. And that's gonna make our shadows a little bit darker and crispier so that we don't lose that definition. And if you want, you can always come in here and duplicate another light, R to rotate. And this is generally called our fill light. The idea of this one is to add a little bit of light to those shadows, just so it's not too dark. So in this case, I'm gonna bring the power of this light right down, and then you can adjust it to give yourself just a little bit of fill on those shadows. But just like that, if I, if I just disable my overlays here, and as another note, something else I probably missed, <laughs> I, I tend to have a lot of settings turned on by default, but you may have a grid in the background as you're doing this. Uh, you can actually just disable that in your overlays here to make things a little bit easier to look at. And here, I just wanted to record an extra little bit here, just to say, don't be afraid to also mess around with your colors. A lot of people ask me how I get these cool two-tone effects. In this case, for example, maybe I want to make this one like a cool purpley or red color, maybe something like purple. And over here, let's stick in a nice blue color, maybe something pretty cool and brighten it up. And you can get these cool two-tone effects going on and just really have a good time and don't feel bogged down by these sort of standards. Have a good time, experiment with your colors and get things looking really nice and pretty. Because in the end, you're working with 3D, we're not restricted by reality. If you wanna light down here with some funky colors going on, do it. Don't be afraid to experiment and just have a good time with this. But I think that's gonna just about do it for today's video. But if you did enjoy, a like as always is very much appreciated. And if you'd be interested in the next episode, which is gonna be the final one, where we're gonna go ahead and add in a camera, play around with our render settings, and finish up our final render. Source files, as always, will be over on the Patreon for those that wanna play around with those. Other than that, my name has been Keelan. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one.